Hi guys, it's me and it's Veda Day, I think 18 is today. And I'm sorry this video is going up so late. I spent the whole day out with my family today. And so, yeah. But I did promise you guys a baking video, so I will share my pumpkin chocolate chip pumpkin bars with you. And some of you would say, okay, it's not fall yet. Why am I sharing this recipe? And it's because I've been craving it for like two weeks. So I'm gonna make it. And I thought this would make a fun Veda video. Well, I don't know. I thought it would, maybe not. But anyways. So I just want to do a disclaimer and say that um, this is the reason why I pick this recipe or why I make this recipe so much is because it is so easy to make. Not only is it easy to make, it's really, really yummy. It's um, really, really cheap to make. Like you can buy all the ingredients, I think for under like $10. And most of the time you actually already have these ingredients in your house, which is why I make it so often is because I always have these ingredients in my house. I think maybe the only two things that I don't usually have are like pumpkin pie spice, which I do have just because I make so much pumpkin spice stuff, and then like the pumpkin puree, which is like $3 like for a huge can at Kroger or whatever you shop. So yeah, so let's get started. All right. So I don't always cook like this, but I do want it, like I did want to make this as easy and quick as possible in terms of showing you guys how to make it. So I have set all of my ingredients out and divided them into what I need beforehand for you. I have my stove, as you can see, preheated to 350. So this is what you'll need. You'll need two cups of all-purpose, uh, white all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice, which I just have this pumpkin pie spice from World Market, but any pumpkin pie spice will do. I also use the store-bought one from Kroger as well. And then you will need one teaspoon of baking soda, which that's the kind of baking soda I use. Now be careful, baking soda and baking powder are two completely different things, but you can bake with both. So just pay attention to that because I've made that mistake when I was younger. Um, and then you're gonna need three-fourths uh, teaspoon of salt and then two sticks of unsalted butter. I actually use whatever butter I have. I usually have salted organic butter in the house, so that's what I'm using today and that's what I usually use, so it doesn't really matter in my opinion, but if you're picky, it does say unsalted butter. Um, it also says at room temperature, but I feel like it's easier to mix to melt it down, so I usually throw it in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then add it to my mixture, so I will be doing that as well. And then one and one fourth cup of sugar, which I just use whatever sugar is cheapest at the store. One large egg. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract with this, which this vanilla extract is actually something that I make. Um, you can buy these kits at different stores. It's just a glass bottle. And I just refill up this vanilla bean jar with uh, rum. So it's a really cheap way to have your own vanilla and it's, you know, it's your own organic way of making it as well. So yeah, it works really well for us. So again, that's just like four vanilla beans sticks with just literally rum <laughs> and you just let it sit for a few days. So that's vanilla. And then one cup of canned pumpkin puree, which again, we always, this is like, I usually have pumpkin puree in my house, but I'm just really weird because I love pumpkins, so that would be something that I don't usually have, or people usually don't have. Everything else people usually have in their kitchen, I think. So you'll need that. And then last but not least, one package of 12 ounce semi-sweet chocolate morsels, which, yeah, you can use anything. You can also use milk chocolate, but I don't know. I kind of like the semi-sweet because I think the milk chocolate sometimes is too sweet. Again, if you want to cut this um, recipe down, to maybe a more healthier way. You can use, you know, different types of sugar. You can use less chocolate chips and less butter, but I'm pregnant and I like the unhealthy for right now, so yeah. Also, you're gonna need a nine by 13 pan. This is actually a glass pan, but you can also use a metal nonstick pan. And then you need to cut, well, you don't have to, but I like to cover mine with aluminum foil because it, um, doesn't stick as much and also the cleanup is better. And I'm not sure if it affects the cooking or baking of it though because I don't know, the recipe calls for it to be covered but I've made it without and it's turned out okay as well. So I cover it though, so it's not that hard. Just use regular aluminum foil, make sure it covers the ends and everything. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go over this pretty quickly but I hope I'm in the screen. So for this recipe, you're going to need a medium to large size bowl a smaller size bowl, a spoon, a spatula, and then also a mixer of some sort. I am just using my very old and very 
I don't know. It's just a handheld mixer. It works really well, and I've had it for years. So, but you, yeah, handheld mixers work just as well. If you don't have a handheld mixer, spoons work too. You just kind of have to work at it a little bit more. First, we're going to mix all of our dry ingredients into our smaller size bowl. So we're going to put our flour, our pumpkin pie spice, our baking soda, our salt, all together. And then we're just going to mix it. And make sure to mix it really well because you don't want any like chunks of pumpkin spice or salt or anything or baking soda winding up in a bite. It's amazing how like that can actually sneak up on you and then you bite into something and it just tastes horrendous. <laughs> now that we have all the dry ingredients put together, we're just going to set that aside. And then we're going to take our large bowl and we're going to take our sugar and our butter and pour them into the big bowl. And I, like as you can see, I already kind of melted this. I put both sticks of butter into the microwave for about a minute. Um, obviously, there's still butter chunks in there, but that's okay. We're going to blend those in. And then we're going to take our handheld blender or whatever mixer that you have and beat it for a few minutes on medium. And then it will kind of look like this. I don't know if you can see it. It's just like a eggy, yolky looking colored creaminess. We're then going to beat in our one egg and our vanilla. We're going to combine those things until completely smooth and disappear. Next we're going to beat in our pumpkin puree. look a little bit curdled and weird but that's okay it's supposed to look like that as you saw I was using my spatula to kind of push down the sides that my blender was not getting to next we're gonna mix in our dry ingredients and then go ahead and mix that up on a low speed until just combined the consistency that you should have is like an actual batter consistency it should be really smooth and just like a batter if you're making a cake and then now you're going to take your last ingredient which is the 12 ounce package of semi-sweet chocolate morsels which again you can use less chocolate or less butter and different sugar if you'd like to make this recipe a little bit healthier but I'm pregnant I don't really need to be watching that kind of thing <laughs> right now so we'll just pour that whole thing in here and then you'll take your spoon and just fold it into the, uh, the batter mixture. Now remember ladies, if you're pregnant, try not to lick your fingers or any of the batter off the spoon because you are using raw egg. I have to stop myself all the time from doing that. <laughs> so now you'll have all of your chocolate morsels mixed into your batter. And now we're just going to pour all of the batter mixture into our foiled pan. Again, it's a 9 by 13 pan. Actually, this is where the spatula comes in handy to get all of the areas that you can't get with a spoon. And then you're just going to smooth it out and evenly make sure that it's covering all of the pan. So ladies, this is what your end result should end up looking like. It is, again, like a battery, nice orangey color. Um, and then it's spread out nicely on the aluminum. Now we're going to put this in the uh, oven in the middle rack at, for about 35 to 40 minutes at 350 degrees. We'll pull it out, let it cool for about 10 minutes and cut them into pieces. It serves about 24. So yeah, that's plenty of food to take for like a potluck or a family get together or something like that. And it's really easy to double up this recipe. I am actually going to make another batch of this because I got these fun little parchment things and I'm going to see if I can make them into a muffin form so I will let you guys know how that turns out after when they get out so yeah we will check back once these are done baking and you can see the final result so while we're waiting for the brownies or the bars or whatever you want to call them to bake, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to all of you who have been just so nice with your comments um, and ha who have expressed appreciation for me sticking to this VEDA thing because yes, it is really difficult. <laughs> it's like 6 o'clock in the evening and I'm exhausted and my feet hurt and they're swollen and I'm tired. 
Um, but I promised to make this video for you guys and I'm working really hard to do that for you. And it's, so it's really nice to get emails and comments from you guys who appreciate that. Like it means a lot to me because even if I only had like one subscriber or two subscribers, I would still do this because just, I don't know, feeling like I'm interacting with you guys on a daily basis is worth it enough for me. And if I can talk to just like one of you, then it's like, I don't know, it makes it all well worth it. So thank you. Just wanted to say that. Um, there's about 25 minutes left on the bars and hopefully my muffins are like cupcake type things. I don't know. I've never tried it before and I'm not quite sure about the temperature to cook them at or the right amount of time. So it's kind of like a guinea pig thing. I'll show you what they look like if I fail or if I succeed, but yeah. Okay guys, so my beeper went off and I think I set it for 35 minutes. I like to do 35 and then test it to make sure it is like cooked and then if not then I do another five because it's 35 to 40 minutes so I will check on those and see where we're at Ooh. so they weren't quite quite done um, I stuck a toothpick in the center and pulled it out and it still had a little bit of stuff on it so I'm gonna put it in for another five minutes and then check on them again yeah. so let's reset the timer and there we go so we'll check back in five minutes all right guys so i put them in for another five minutes and i rechecked them with the toothpick and the toothpicks came out clean and they look great so here is the finished product here are the muffin tins that i use they are in little um i don't know what you call these they're these <laughs> i thought they were cute i thought they looked more like baker-ish kind of muffiny kind of cafe style so those are non-stick parchment lotus cups. And what I did for those is I put them in for the same exact amount of time. And they are a little brown around the edges, but they seem to, they don't smell burnt and they don't feel burnt. So, and everything's coming out clean on the toothpick. So those should be good. And then these are the bars, which are super yummy. So this, as you can see, you press down and it does it. You don't want it completely cooked. Like you want it a little bit soft because that gives it that cakey, moist texture. So you're gonna just let it cool in the pan um, for about 10 minutes before you attempt to cut it and stuff. And these seriously taste best like right after they're done cooling off because the chocolate chips are still like melty and yummy and gooey and oh, But they taste good like even days after. So yeah, I'm very excited. The muffin things seem to work. That They feel good, they look good, and they smell good. So you, there you have it. I don't know, I will actually, I don't know, maybe I'll test the, one of the muffins now just to make sure that they taste okay, but yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this baking video, and if you have any questions, you can head over to my website, www.babybellakelly.com. I will leave the full recipe and stuff there for you to check out. So I will see you guys all tomorrow for beta day 19. Yeah, bye.